I first became aware of Seneca Village in the early 1990s when a book was published, which was called The Park and the People by Betsy Blackmar and Roy Rosenzweig. And in that book, they devoted a chapter to the people who lived in what was to become Central Park when the park was created, and they featured Seneca Village. I read an interview with Betsy Blackmar in Newsday, I'll never forget it, and I thought, my gosh, maybe there's archaeological potential there, maybe there are archaeological traces left of Seneca Village that are still in the park. One of the things that I've learned from working in archaeology in New York City for a long time is not that things get destroyed, you expect that, but the thing that is, I've learned over and over again, never eliminate the possibility that there could be something there. I got involved with the Seneca Village project in 1998 or 99, uh, when it was after the ex exhibition at the New York Historical Society, and so that was really the first I'd heard about Seneca Village. Diana Wall was interested in putting together a group to uh, maybe do an excavation. And So I was interested in doing an archaeological project in Central Park at the site of Seneca Village to see if there was anything left. Um, I had started teaching at City College at that point and I had felt it might be a good project to work with students on. I became friends with Herbert Signore, who was first my student at, uh, at City College and then together he and I went down to the Historical Society when Cynthia Copeland had begun doing programming connected with Seneca Village at the Historical Society, and we became involved with her. And then we also asked Nan Rothschild to help us because she and I had worked together at uh, large-scale excavations in Lower Manhattan several years before then. So what I'm really saying is that the Seneca Village project, I'm sort of embarrassed to say this, began almost 20 years ago in the early 1990s. When we decided that we were going to try and figure out if there were any archaeological remnants of Seneca Village, um, we started with a grant from the National Science Foundation. These grants allowed us to incorporate students into doing research on the village, documentary research, looking at historical records, finding out about who had lived there. For two summers, we had students who did really intensive documentary stuff. I mean, they combed the archives. We have a very extensive database of tax records and, and affidavits and census records and church records and health records. I mean, if you think of it, Seneca Village really was two populations because there was the population of the dead, all the people who were buried there and what they died of, which we haven't done anything with, and the population of the living, which is what we've really focused on. We began to do some work that was geared more to finding out if there was something left in the ground. We began to use remote sensing techniques, first trying to figure out what was the most appropriate one for that place. And there was a geophysicist at Columbia who suggested that he could teach the students um, to try these different techniques and at the same time we would be seeing if any of them worked. It turned out that ground, ground penetrating radar was. We couldn't do magnetometry because we knew that the, there was a lot of, you know, utility lines. We were close to the subway. A few years later, we did some corings. In other words, uh, literally making, uh, making holes in the ground and analyzing the soil, working with a geoarchaeologist who could tell us if that soil was created in situ, right there, in other words, and therefore any artifacts that we might find, find dating to the right period would have been from Seneca Village, or if it was landfill that had been brought in, either from other parts of the park or New Jersey or someplace like that, in which case we would assume any uh, artifacts that were found in that did not come from Seneca Village. We um, got a geophysicist from Denver, Larry Conyers, who came and um, did ground penetrating radar in each of these five areas. One of them was an area which we thought was a graveyard, and so we wanted to see if there were burials so that we could avoid them. But the other areas were, were areas where we thought there might be houses. And so he identified eight areas that seemed promising in terms of excavation. What we did then was try to get permission. We 
were very lucky in the people who are on our advisory committee were very good at advising us on how to get permission from the city and from the Central Park Conservancy. Uh, we have a board, an advisory board, um, made up of people from the community, historians, descendants of uh, people from the original churches, uh, and they have been incredibly helpful. And that ultimately worked out very well, though it took from 2005 until 2011 before we actually were able to put shovel into the ground.